Good morning, church. Welcome to Bologna United Methodist Church. We are a church dedicated to loving our community as we are through words, actions, and presence. I am not Pastor Chad Hornsby. I am youth pastor Andrea Stitt. And I want to welcome you to a very special worship this morning. Hold on, let me breathe. Youth Sunday, where the youth are going to be running all of the things that we can. Um, so, as you're joining us, I ask you to please join us with an attitude of grace. We've practiced really hard and worked really hard for this. I also ask the youth to give yourselves some grace. Um, we've worked really hard on this. So, um, there's going to be a lot of announcements through the day about youth things. The first one I'm going to go ahead and kick off is I have the full year calendar until May created. Um, it's on the back table if anyone wants to look at it. It has all of our big events. We're introducing Sunday evenings. We are, it has all of our fundraisers on there. Anything youth until May is color coordinated on this calendar. So if you have any youth questions, it's here. Um, which is really exciting for me. So, um, as a reminder, attendance pads are moving from the back to the front. Please make sure you fill those out because we want to make sure that we count you for being here. Um, and we're so happy that you guys are here this morning. Thank you for being here and hanging out on Labor Day weekend and supporting the youth. Um, thank you for everybody online and all of the guests that are joining us either online or in person. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to send it to Sky. Okay. Hey, guys. Good morning. Um, here's the opening prayer. Glorious God, source of joy and righteousness, enable us as redeemed and forgiven children evermore to rejoice in singing your praises. Grant that what we sing with our lips, we may believe in our hearts, and what we believe in our hearts, we may practice in our lives, so that being doers of the word and not hearers only, we may receive everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen.
You guys are so far away. Can we move a little? I feel like I'm. Oh. Like, like, shift over here. Slide this way. Oh, over here. I know. I'm bossy. The teenagers have been dealing with it all week. So, today, Sky, one of our teenagers, is going to be bringing the message. Isn't that so exciting? So, she's going to be telling us a little bit about Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene is one of my favorite characters in the Bible. Okay. <laughs> but she was a woman that had a lot of troubles and sadness at the beginning of her life before she met Jesus. Um, and after she met Jesus, everything changed for her. So Jesus helped Mary by freeing her from the troubles that were bothering her. Um, and she became one of Jesus' closest friends. After Jesus died and was buried... Mary went to visit his tomb. She was very sad because she thought Jesus was gone forever. But then something amazing happened. And Jesus had come back to life. He appeared to Mary and he told her that he was alive and she should go tell everyone the good news. So, that's kind of the story that we'll hear a little bit about today from Sky. Um, I've got a box here. And it's a pretty plain you know, Amazon box. Well, yeah, Amazon box. It's got some origami paper in it, some flat origami paper. Um, this box represents Mary Magdalene's life before she met Jesus. It's pretty simple. The paper's flat, nothing remarkable. Um, it wasn't very exciting, right? So, Mary's life is like this box. And so, if we take some paper and we start to make some cool things with it. We could probably fill this box with some really awesome stuff, right? Yeah. I don't know if I'll be able to do this fast enough, but I'm trying to make one of those little um, fortune teller things that you guys, I don't know if you guys do it anymore, but it was a big thing when I was a teenager. Um, where you just kind of like, you know, well, I'm not quite sure how it works, to be honest. Oh, oh, she's got this. I love it. Um, so ooh, it can be transformed into something new and exciting, um, something that you guys can play with and enjoy. How do you guys think that Mary felt when Mary saw Jesus alive again in the tomb? I think she might have been pretty amazed that her best friend had died and come back. It's a little scared, probably. It was probably like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Maybe she couldn't believe her eyes at first, right? 
So Jesus can help us change too, especially when things are tough or when we need to change for the better. Just like Miss Katie is helping me change the papers that I couldn't do on my own. Um, real, real, really helpful. <laughs> so, haha, she did it. We got it. So if we had a whole bunch of those in this box, this box would be a little bit more interesting, right? A little bit more fun, a little bit more enjoyable. So remember that just like Mary Magdalene, if we are going down a hard path, we're having a hard day, maybe things aren't going right for us, maybe we're making some bad choices, we can always change and be better, right? Just like Miss Mary was. So I encourage you as we leave today to think about how you might change to be better. And to do that, I'm going to give you guys all your own piece of origami paper. You can actually grab a couple. I've got a whole stack here um, so that you guys can fold it and change it and make it to what you guys want it to be. But before I hand out the paper, we're going to pray, okay? So if you guys will join me and bow your heads. Dear God, thank you so much for how you change us and how you change our lives. We pray that you help us this week love one another as you love us. In your name I pray. Amen. Okay, you guys can grab paper. It's not a snack if it doesn't want it. And youth, I believe, are on my lighthouse. And all the music coming back up, if you will please stand and join us in singing My Lighthouse. And I hear the clapping, so if you're not awake yet,
congregational prayer as it is printed in our bulletin. O Lord, open my eyes that I may see the needs of others. Open my ears that I may hear their cries. Open my heart so that they need not without support. Let me not be afraid to defend the weak. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of scripture. Thanks be to God. Be kind, compassionate, and forgiving to each other in the same way God forgave you in Christ. Is that it? Is that all I'll read? Okay. <laughs> okay. This is, okay. Right. Um, let's see, John twenty eighteen, Mary Magdalene went and said to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that, told him what he had said these things to her. I'm Pastor Chad. <laughs> no, I'm not. Don't ever let me tell you that, all right? Um, because he doesn't wear bell bottoms. At least I don't think. Don't quote me on that because Pastor Chad might wear bell bottoms. I'm Skylar Potts, and today we're going to be talking about Mary Magdalene, forgiveness and change. So, we'll start. Mary Magdalene, which her last name was actually unknown, because Mary, or Magdalene is where she's from, not her last name. Mary of Magdala is actually her name. She's a woman in the Gospels of Luke and Mark. She's believed to be the prostitute who washed Jesus' feet. Sorry, guys. Anyways. She's believed to be the prostitute who washed Jesus' feet with her tears and dried his feet with her hair. But that is actually not her story. Um, Mary's original story may hit a little closer to home. Um because I don't think we're all prostitutes. <laughs> Just saying. Um, though no matter what you think, think of her, she was undoubtedly one of the most important people in the Bible. Her story begins around the time of the birth of Jesus in the village for which she was named Mary of Magdala. Magdala was located on the Sea of Galilee in the province of the Roman Empire called Judas. In our present time, nothing remains of Mary's hometown which is really sad. Though in its prime, it was a bustling center of the fish trade. Living in the fish, fishing village meant Mary and her family most likely had a deep regard for their Jewish you know, religion and heritage. Her life was most likely cycled by the Jewish year. Though her early life aside, Mary Magdalene historically was probably a prosperous and pious young woman in Magdala. The Bible shows she was also troubled. According to the Gospels, she was possessed by seven, seven demons, which could also mean she had an addiction. She was prideful in her status. She could have been troubled by, with a sort of mania. Maybe she was just angry with herself or others. Her story was quick to change with one encounter, the encounter she had with Jesus. The way she met Jesus was probably the way he met most of his disciples. She was most likely working as she met him just by chance. That's when the most important moment of her life happened. 
Jesus changed her, freed her both in spirit and in body, healing her essentially. She then gained a sense of hope and faith in Christ as she followed him and trusted him, and he trusted her too. They started to form a close bond, becoming what we would say were best friends. Though, right, okay. Some would rather say they were lovers. Others say that she was just his most trusted associate. But to me personally, they were best friends. Of course, you may interpret their relationship how you would like, and nobody is judging you for how you're interpreting their relationship. But try to imagine you and your best friend. My best friend is a girl named Kaya. She's super nice. Some of you might know her, and I tell her everything. She's who I like to talk to when things get rough. She's always there for me, for me and keeps my secrets, and she does the same thing with me. She tells me things, and I am always there for her. Your best friend is probably the same way I'd. I'd say my best friend is. Someone you can tell things to. Someone who wouldn't hurt you. And someone who will probably give you some pretty honest advice. Then think about how Mary and Jesus were. Mary probably told Jesus things, and he told her things. Mary was always there for him, and Jesus was always there for her, of course. Now think, Mary changed once she was freed by Christ, but not only that, she changed once she worked on herself. She changed to be a better person. Now let's change the thought to what Mary was. We can already say from what we figured out that she was a prosperous fishing woman. She was Jewish, so she already believed in the Lord. Her first name was known, but her last name wasn't. And she most likely suffered from an addiction, or she may have been prideful, or we can just really say she sinned. Now we can say she's a lot like us, or some of us at least. She was a regular working person. Some people only knew her first name, which was why her name really wasn't recorded. She was in touch with her religion, and she sinned. So, sounds normal to me. Um, most of us can probably relate to her in a lot of ways. What makes her different was her seven demons. Her sins made her slightly different than us. We didn't know exactly what she did because she could have had a mental illness or she could have been addicted to something or, she, or anything sinful. We know all of this, but her light really shines through when she is saved. She then dedicates herself to the Lord and followed Jesus all the way to when she looked in the grave and she saw there was, he wasn't, there and found out that he was resurrected. She changed for the good. She changed for her faith and she changed for herself. This means you can change. This means nothing can really stop you from changing. It can happen as quickly as today. If you want to change, if there is something holding you from your faith, change. You are able. Take this chance. Take the millions chance, million chances you get and change. Change is not easy. But it is the right thing to do because the Lord wants you to change. I know that recently I myself have changed. Some things and people were making it really hard to hold on to my faith. And almost every night I prayed for something to happen, for something to spring up and for me to finally get better. Eventually, I realized that I have to do things myself too. The Lord makes us our own people so we can all be different and all have our separate challenges to make who we are. And he makes us have challenges so we do change and grow. He gave Mary challenges and she knew when she met Jesus that it that means that 
it doesn't have to, it doesn't just take prayer to, for things to change. It makes you a person. It takes you as a person to change too. I only got when I only got better when I pulled myself up. Mary only got better when she pulled herself up. In the end, you'll be okay if you change. Good people won't leave you if you try to change. Because in Syrac 37:17, it says the key to change is in the heart. It is the only thing you need to change. If there is something inside you that is spiteful, that is prideful, that is hateful, if you are two-faced, if you are full of anger, if you are addicted to alcohol or drugs, if, or nicotine or anything of that nature, if you are just straight up sinful, change. Because you can change. You don't have to ever be perfect. Because if God made perfection, you wouldn't have to change. Just try to be better. The Lord will never give up on you. And it is, it is far from impossible to change. It doesn't matter if your past haunts you and you feel like that one thing is your escape from the harsh reality you faced. If that thing is harming you, change because you will be okay. You are safe. You will be okay in the end because the Lord loves you. And as long as you have faith, you will be fine. He accepts you. Keep your head high. Love yourself. Love others. Forgive. Don't hurt others. Recognize yourself. If you need a change, recognize yourself and you need a change. Recognize yourself if you are hurting yourself or others. In the Bible, there's absolutely nowhere that says you cannot change, that you are stuck as the same person as you were before. He didn't make you like this so you would stay the same. You aren't a bad person. You just need to change. In Mark 6, 12, it says, so they went out and proclaimed that people should change their hearts and lives. You are also forgiven. Just because you did all those bad things in the past doesn't mean he doesn't forgive you. It doesn't mean that others aren't willing to forgive you either. The Lord will always forgive you. In Matthew 20, 26, 28, Jesus says, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many so that their sins may be forgiven. You were already forgiven when you started that bad decision. We all sin. We are all forgiven. And we are all saved because he saved us. You are okay. And he has made sure you are okay. If you don't have a safe space, this can be your safe space. The church can be your safe space. You are okay. To add to that, forgive others. Love thy neighbor because you don't know how much that neighbor needs that love. Disregard what you might know about them. Be kind. Share kindness and love. In Luke 17.4, the Lord says, Even if someone sins against you, seven times and says, I am changing, you must forgive that person. You never know if that seventh time might be the time they change. You should love your neighbor no matter what. You never know when they might need that grace. Other people are allowed to change as you are. As we go out today, think about what we need to change about ourselves and how really we all need to change. Walk up to someone, look at them in the eyes and tell them, you are okay. Talk to them, give them a hug. Tell them that the Lord loves them because they might need it. I knew, I know, there were plenty of times in my life 
I know that there were plenty of times in my life that I needed that. I needed to be told that I was okay and that I could, I could get about this hard, tough spot my, myself. There were plenty of times I needed a hug or just a simple, you are okay, which if somebody came up to me and said, you are okay, I'd probably think it was a little weird, but they said that I was okay as a person that I could change. Please remember, as you think about yourself, change isn't unattainable. Support isn't unattainable. And the love that you deserve isn't unattainable either. Thank you. Please rise in body or spirit to and join me in affirming our faith as it is written in the Old and New Testament. I believe in the God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his holy son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of Virgin Mary, suffered and crucified, dead and buried. He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He sat at the right hand of the Father of God Almighty. He's the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the heart, and I sing. the time and service for us to share joys and concerns. Jean Cure has COVID. Karen Seeds also has COVID. Cheryl, Cheryl Donnelly, pastor's mother-in-law, is starting chemo Tuesday. Family of Polly Lackey passed away yesterday. Gerald Coker's niece, Charles Coker's cousin. Um, travel concerns for all traveling this weekend. Um, Cece is home from the hospital and doing much better. And today is Mr. Coker's birthday. So, tell them happy birthday after service. Um, at this time, you are invited into a time of silent prayer. You can pray in your seats, by kneeling at the altar rail, or by participating in a prayer station. You can light a candle as you offer a prayer or for a loved one, or ask God to guide you. Gracious and loving God, thou hast made us for thyself. O Lord, our hearts are restless until they find rest in thee. In this vast and ever-expanding world, our hearts may seem small, yet they yearn for something far greater than this world can offer. 
Though this world is immense, it is unable to satisfy to keep deep longings of our hearts. Only in the infinite and eternal God can our ever-growing souls find their full, their true fulfillment. Just as water seeks its level, so our heart or so our souls find no peace until they rest in you. We come before you today with hearts open, longing, seeking your presence to bring us the rest and peace that only you can provide. Lord, as we gather to celebrate Youth Sunday, we pray for renewal within your church and for each young person in body and in spirit who is a part of it. Transform us, O oh God, in the power of your spirit. Save us from empty words and self-deception. In our service, in you, shape us the power of the cross, molding us into vessels of your love and grace. Help us to embrace your call with sincerity and passion. Guide us to be a community that reflects your light and truth, encouraging and supporting one another in our journey of faith. May our hearts be ever relentless restless until they rest fully in you and may we find our deepest joys and purpose in serving you and each other we offer this prayer in the name of your son jesus christ who brings us to your eternal rest as we pray together the prayer he taught us to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. now is the time for offering so as our ushers come forward to help with the um, offering plates I'm going to tell you about a couple of different ways um, first of all um, your giving to Bologna United Methodist Church um, in general helps to support the missions and ministries of this entire church you guys just hang out for a second I'll help you out in a second um, there's the blessing box our youth activities the summer reading program and all of the other activities that we do through this church um, are able to happen because of your generosity. You can give by placing something in the plate today or in just a moment. Um, you can make a gift online at valenuumc.org or by credit card at the back of the church. Um, really quick, I just have some other ways that you guys can support the church. Um, September is going to be the month. We did it, introduced it last year. We're going to be doing our youth shares again. Um, if anyone wants to participate in youth shares, that we'll end the year with a youth shares dinner, and you will get a youth assigned to you for you get to pray over for the year. Um, and let's see, you will get regular thank you cards, updates, and then the $240 one gets free Valentine's Day tickets. And then two other things too, believe it or not. If shares is not your thing, we need some help. We're introducing a Sunday evening ministry um, and I want to feed the youth during these Sunday evenings. So we'll have a sign up sheet for Sunday evening meals. This goes all the way until May. There's only 21 spots. So if people can fill in, um, they have the dates already there and the times, this would be so helpful for our ministry. And then finally, one of the biggest fundraisers we're doing this year is we're introducing a pumpkin patch. And that starts in October. Um, all of the pumpkins will be here October 14th at 10 a.m., which is a Monday. And we have to start selling our pumpkins October 15th. Um, so if anyone wants to come help uh, man the pumpkin patch, this is a sign-up sheet. I put four volunteers for each hour. Um, but you can come and help as much as little as you want. Pastor and I will probably be out there a whole lot more covering anything that doesn't get covered. But we would love your help and assistance um, to really make this fundraiser a smashing hit. And 
that, I'm going to really quick help these guys with the plates. I'll be right back. Thank you all for supporting the ministries of this church. For the record, I don't own any bell bottoms. <laughs> um, one of the things we do as a Christian to mark our change, to mark who we are, to remind ourselves of who we are, is to come to the table. At the communion table, all are welcome. We celebrate an open table. That means no matter who you are, whether you want, you love God, you just want to love God, or if you, even if you're just thinking about loving God, this is a place for you. In a moment, we will receive communion. The way we do that here is by taking a piece of bread, and it will be placed in your hand, and then you will dip that into the cup, and you will take both elements together. And so, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we join in their unending hymn. And praise your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. night in which he gave himself up for us he took the bread he gave thanks to you he broke the bread gave it to his disciples and said take eat this is my body which has been broken for you do this in remembrance of me when the supper was over he took the cup gave it to his or gave thanks to you Gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. 
Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's sacrifice for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite the communion stewards to come forward who are going to be serving.
guys, you may actually be seated for just a moment. Um, it's always a joy when new people join the church, and it's always really sad when they leave. Uh, this Sunday happens to be the Richardsons last Sunday with us, and we are going to greatly miss them. But I'd like to ask them to come forward um, and face the congregation. Yeah, they can leave the baby. Um, Josh was hoping that he would get by with this just being a regular Sunday, so let's please make sure he knows how much he will be missed. The church is a family. We are united by the common recognition of Jesus Christ as our Savior. We are all brothers and sisters. And for a time, Bologna United Methodist Church is our home. Like every human family, our church is formed and reformed over time. As members are born, as they die, as members are adopted into our family, and as they leave our congregation for a new home in a different place. For a time, Katie, Josh, and Zeta Jane have lived with us. We share with each other in the good times and the bad. We have shared each other's joys and sorrows. We have lightened each other's heavy loads. Together, we have laughed and cried. And together, we have worshiped and praised God. Together, we have lived. On behalf of the congregation, we feel sorry in your, in your leaving. Yet we rejoice with you in anticipation of this new phase of your life. We will miss your love and support. Yet we know you will add much to the lives of those who will be your new church family, as you have added so much to our lives. We will continue to pray for you and for the whole family of God. Let us pray together. O oh God, you are the strength and the protector of your people. We humbly place in your hands Katie, Josh, and Zeta Jane into the prayers of this congregation who are about to leave us. Keep and preserve them, O oh Lord, in all health and safety, both body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Church family, as we leave today, let us not just leave the church, but let us go out and be the church, taking the love of God with us. Go in peace. <laughs>